Have you ever wondered why European cities seem to have an almost magical quality to them? From Paris and Rome to Amsterdam and Vienna, these cities boast a fantastic mix of historical and organic buildings, transportation systems and community spaces that over 590 million tourists rush to see each year. In this video, we're going to talk about the reasons why European cities are insanely well designed. Make sure to stick with us until the end and tap the subscribe button for more exciting and insightful videos. Let's get to it. To truly understand the brilliance of European city design, we have to go back in time. Europe has 828 cities, and many of these cities boast a rich historical heritage that dates back centuries, and this heritage has played a significant role in shaping their layouts. The Europeans cared so much about their heritage, they stuck their nose up and kept to their battle-hardened buildings and empires, even when skyscrapers rose crazily in the United States in the late 1920s. Unlike some newer cities, which were hastily constructed without much planning, European cities evolved organically with careful consideration given to their structures. The cities rose from one era to another, adapting and growing thanks or no thanks to great thinkers in artificial and natural disasters. Georges Eugene Haussmann and Inlefons Cherda transformed Paris and Barcelona, respectively. The Renaissance did it for Florence, earthquakes changed Lisbon's building designs, the Great Fire of London brought radical change to the city's structure, and the Second World War influenced a lot of change across Europe. History has always played a massive part in Europe's well-designed cities, which continues to be the case. Preserving historical landmarks and buildings is a top priority in European cities. The Eiffel Tower, the most visited landmark in Europe and the most paid-for monument in the world, welcomes 7 million visitors annually. Completed on March 31, 1889, the tower was the world's tallest man-made structure for 41 years, until the Chrysler Building in New York was completed in 1930. Besides the Eiffel Tower in Paris, the Colosseum in Rome, the Parthenon in Athens, La Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Stonehenge in the UK, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Pisa, and the Pantheon in Rome are some of the most famous historical monuments in Europe. These structures have been around for many decades and are some of the most visited places in the world. Many ancient European structures have also been restored, ensuring that the architectural heritage of the past is seamlessly integrated into the modern cityscape. The iconic Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris is an excellent example of structures that have been restored after they were almost completely destroyed. After the Notre Dame roof space caught fire on April 15, 2019, 833 million euros, around $997 million, were raised for its restoration. The funds raised were mostly from private donors, a testament to the love these historical European structures get from the people, not just in Europe, but worldwide. Notre Dame is reported to reopen at the end of 2024. Although heritage carries much weight in European minds, that doesn't mean they have refused to grow at the times. They've just done it in their own way. In fact, their approach to urbanization has been more effective and safer for the planet than any other. This blend of old and new creates a unique atmosphere where the past coexists harmoniously with the present. Europe has a well-connected system or cluster of cities centered around advanced services, innovation, and creative economies focused on people, labor, capital, and ideas. They're categorized into the Western European large and capital cities, which serve as a point of centrality. Deindustrializing cities, which recovered from economic crisis through investments. Mediterranean cities, which are well known for tourism, and Eastern and Central European cities, which have emerged from the collapse of the Soviet Union and adapted to the modern market economy. These clusters of cities have their specializations, which makes for a very self-sufficient continent. European architects and urban planners have also long emphasized the importance of harmony between buildings, streets, and public spaces. The emphasis on aesthetics and functionality has resulted in cities that are not only visually appealing, but also incredibly practical to live in. Another aspect that sets European cities apart is their emphasis on public transportation and walkability. Many European cities have extensive public transportation systems, including buses, trams, and metro networks. The longest metro network in Europe, the London Underground, covers over 470 kilometers and carries nearly 1.1 billion passengers yearly. The tube, as some people call it, was the world's first underground train line, opening in 1863 and what is today called the Metropolitan Line. The London Metro Network is the fourth largest in the world, behind Seoul and South Korea. The second largest metro network in Europe 
in the Spanish capital of Madrid is around 291 kilometers long, just over half the size of London's metro system. Underground mass transit eased the pressures of rapid population growth, urban expansion, and traffic congestion in major European cities during the first half of the 19th century. Europe's extensive metro system is why all the EU countries combined have fewer cars than the United States alone. There are about 250 million cars in all of Europe, while the United States, with over 290 million vehicles on the road, dedicates more land to parking spaces than residential houses. People often joke that European cities, especially the old ones, are built for humans, while American cities were created for cars. They're not wrong, considering Europe has twice the population of the United States, with over 746 million people compared to America's 331 million this shouldn't be the case at all. Also, the well-developed metro network and public transportation system significantly reduce Europe's contribution to climate change through car emissions. The United States contributes 15% of global CO2 emissions compared to 9.8% from all 28 members of the European Union. Additionally, the layout of streets and neighborhoods encourages walking and cycling, further reducing the dependence on cars. In fact, nine of the ten of the world's most bike-friendly cities are in Europe, with the Dutch city of Utrecht ranking first. 51% of Utrecht's population uses bikes every day. On a map, the bike paths in Europe look even more complex than the US road system, with the Netherlands having the most bike routes. You can even tour most of Europe on bicycles. The Eurovelo is a network of 17 long-distance cycle routes that cross and connect Europe. These routes are approved by the European Cyclist Federation to encourage many European citizens to try cycling and promote a shift to healthy and sustainable travel for daily trips and cycling tourism. This focus on eco-friendly and efficient modes of transportation significantly contributes to European cities' overall design and atmosphere. European cities are also known for their lush green spaces. On average, some 40% of the surface area of European cities is made up of urban green infrastructure and 44% of Europe's urban population lives within 300 meters of a public park. The greenest city in Europe, Oslo, Norway, has a park within 300 meters of 95% of its population. 74% of Oslo's urban areas are made up of green spaces. That's a lot of greenery. London alone boasts 3,000 public green parks, followed by Berlin with 2,500 and Vienna with 2,000. Parks, gardens, and squares are integrated into Europe's urban fabric providing residents and visitors with serene spaces to take the pressure off amidst the hustle and bustle. I bet early morning walks in the park get differently in Europe. Preserving these green spaces not only enhances the aesthetic appeal of the cities, but also promotes a sense of well-being and environmental sustainability. Last but certainly not least, European cities prioritize community-centric design. Public spaces make up between 2 and 15 percent of land in European city centers. From George Square in Scotland, Grand Place in Belgium, and Piazza del Campo in Italy to Trafalgar Square in London, these public squares are not only famous and culturally important, but also incredibly breathtaking and alive. Public squares, markets, and community centers serve as gathering points for residents, promoting a sense of belonging and connection. The method of these communal spaces encourages social interactions, creating solid bonds among neighbors, and contributing to the overall feel of community in these cities. And there you have it, the reasons European cities are insanely well designed. They simply care about history, people, and the environment. European cities have truly mastered the art of creating urban environments that are not only beautiful, but also incredibly livable, making them some of the most famous, prosperous, and appreciated cities in the world. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Let us know in the comments which European city you find the most fascinating. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.